Hey everybody, as you probably know, I love guitar amps and guitar pedals and all those effect things that we can do in hardware. In fact, I've built guitar amps and pedals, I've got so many I can't fit them all in my studio. Some of them are in storage unfortunately at the moment. And I really like using them. However, I also love amp sims, the flexibility that they offer, the ease of use that they offer, and you know, you can do interesting things in amp sims that you can't do in normal hardware. Well, this is all very fine and good. We can buy amp sims and so on. But there's another way to model guitar amps, and that's by doing it ourselves. And I'm gonna show you a really simple way that you might get just something a little bit different to your off-the-shelf amp sim. So join me over in Mixbus. You can use any digital audio workstation you like. The plugins are free, and I'm gonna put a link to any downloads that you need. Um, so yeah, grab a guitar, grab your interface, and come and join me, and let's make an amp sim. Hey, so we're over in Harrison Mixbus. You can use whichever um, DAW you prefer, but I prefer Mixbus. <clears throat> um, now, I've got two plugins, uh, which are both free plugins. Um, you can use alternatives to them. There's lots of other plugins available which are very similar. Uh, so we've got Wave Shaper from Melder, and we've got Poulain, uh, sorry, Le Cab 2 or Le Cab 2 from uh, Poulain. Um, the first is a, a system that changes the, um, the sounds that you put into it using a graphical system, and the second is an uh, a impulse response loader which emulates the sound of guitar cabinets. Now, you will also have to go and find some impulse responses. There are lots of free ones available. There are some which are, are better um, in the most part, which uh, you have to pay for. Um, I'm using one I've created myself for a project, and I've chosen this one because it sounds quite roomy. It's um, an AKG D190 um, on the cone of um, the top right hand cone of a 4x12. Um, so let's hear the guitar. <laughs> This is just a D-eyed Stratocaster. Okay, now I'm going to engage the cab. So as you can hear, it's basically cutting off a lot of the high frequencies. We're getting some kind of resonances and a little bit of um, reverberation. Okay, cool. So, leaving that on, we're going to address the wave shaper. Now, you can use any wave shaper. As I say, this one's quite versatile and free. It comes part of a, a plugin bundle, a free plugin mix bundle. Um, I'll leave the links in the descriptions. So first things first, let's make sure we are set to default on it. And let's make sure that our signal is going in, going through the wave shaper, through the cab, and then onto any additional processing. You'll notice there's a reverb at the top of that signal chain. We'll talk about that in a moment. So first things first, I'm going to push this dry wet knob right or control right up to 100%. Um, you'll notice when I play that a line comes across the x-axis and basically that shows the input volume. The output volume is read off the graph um, from the, uh, the y-axis. So it really is just looking at each individual sample and scaling it according to what the graph says. So doesn't this sound like we could maybe make it a compressor? Well, yes, we could make a compressor. So I'm just gonna add a point, and I'm gonna pull this top one down, and we've got a compressor. Hmm, just click here, give it a soft knee, and... <laughs> Wow, 
Okay, so if you couldn't hear that compressing, this is what it sounds like without the compressor. With. Now compression is difficult to hear. I've done some videos about how to identify when compression is, is engaging and not. Um, let's make it a bit more aggressive. A little bit more aggressive. It's almost like a limiter now. Um, you'll notice that the twangs, the, the spikiness, seems to go, and the whole body of the guitar seems comparatively louder. Um, a little bit more bassy, and a lot of the travel is, is kind of lost. So, I'm just rolling up my, um, my high-pass filter on my... Um, on my amp simulator, my cab simulator there. So, some of you are probably thinking, well, hang on a minute, isn't a tube screamer basically a clipping system that stops the signal going any louder than a certain point? And yes, it is, and it does certain things, but we can approximate it by simply making this a little bit harder, just a little bit harder. <laughs> Then what we're going to do is we're just going to move this over. So the angle of this, if the angle is above 45 degrees, it means we've applied gain. So I'm just going to move this over and make sure this is sort of fairly moderate. And you'll start to hear a bit of gain comes in. I'll drop that volume, overall volume down a little bit. it starts to sound a bit like an overdrive pedal. We can make it more aggressive by making the knee harder. Which means we drive into saturation quicker. What happens if we keep moving this over? We get higher and higher gains. Easy single coil pickup on the strap there. So we've created essentially a kind of a tube screamer vibe, maybe something slightly more distorted than that. That's kind of cool, isn't it? But you can hear hiss. How do we get rid of that hiss? Well, we can simply add another point and we can drag this point down. And what we're doing here is we're adding a lower angle slope at the very start, which means the gain is reduced. But when we get to the point here where the um, where the angle starts to change, the gain then increases. So we've got a, like a non-linear gain. And then we go into the distortion. So you can't hear much background noise here coming off the hiss coming off the guitar. There's a little bit, but not an awful lot. <laughs> sounds a bit like one of those sort of germanium fuzz pedals. Um, so lots of kind of chunky chord sounds uh, that we can achieve. That's great. But those of you who've watched some of my previous videos on guitar pedals and where we analyse them with the sine wave will notice that the more aggressive distortion pedals actually have some really interesting waveforms. Um, and we can simply add more points, more and more points, 
two are wave shaper and really make a change. If that's not better than your old Zoom 505, then uh, I'll eat my hat. Okay, so where can we go from here? Well, there's one other cool thing we could do. We could add some sag. Now, it's not really sag because it's not time dependent, but if we put a little drop, let's just make this all a bit more straight. We put a little drop just before we get to the top. When we really start hammering the guitar, the volume's gonna go down a tiny bit. So you get just that little bit of sag when you hit the right point and you can adjust that and make changes. So one final thing with this wave shaper is that there's a random setting. Now I'm going to totally delete this and just click random and we get all these crazy random. Get all these crazy random settings. Now I'd recommend keeping on squared. But you can do some really cool effects, and this doesn't have to just be for guitars. These dynamic effects can be used on any input, really. So that is what a wave shaper is, and that's what you can use it for in terms of guitar amp simulation. Um, I'm going to go back to my kind of default setting and just quickly build a little bit of a, a mellow overdrive. Um, let's say a bit there. Pull this down. There we go. Yeah, let's make that there. A little bit more mellow, give it a bit of a softer knee and bring it over there. Give us a little bit of a noise gate on it. Bit of a bluesy sound. Well, let's see what would happen if we put a bit of a spacey guitar in the front. Spacey reverb, I should say. I'm going to use uh, Lush guitar on G-Verb. Um, now this is a Harrison plugin, but you can use any plugin you like. So, that is how to use a wave shaper to make your own guitar amp simulator. Yes, there are some artifacts, but it's hellishly fun, and it's going to give you something that you can't get anywhere else. This is not how all guitar amp simulators are made, but it's a nice easy way of getting started and you know, creating something that's unique to you as a producer. Okay, well, if you like this video, click like, subscribe and ring the bell. If you didn't like it, well, that other button seems to work okay as well. Catch you next time. Happy recording.